Praise God, everybody, starting another dive into the Word of God. And today I have my daughters with me, Bella Hi. and Jesse. Amen. So we're going to wait a few seconds. We're going to sing a song, give, us, give you a, a little report of our journey to this COVID, right? And what happened. And yes, we are all positive, but... Uh, there's more to it, so I'll share with you later. So we're gonna sing, and then we we gonna um, then we're gonna get into the word and share a little bit of things how we're managing and and how the Lord is, you know, um, touching us and blessing us through this time. Amen. So I love this song, Psalms 46. If you don't know Psalms 46, let's go there. <laughs>
Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I love that song. So let's connect here. Amen. Amen. Hope you can hear us. We got a lot of people here tonight. Let's say hi to Louise. Hi, Ruth. Hey. Ruth Ann. How you doing, Al? Marcia. Sumaya. Amen. Praise God. God bless you too, Al. Elizabeth, Jean Lopes, Chris Teixeira, Alexandre de Anini. Ô, pastorzão, tudo bem? Anderson Merencia, Andrea Bepler, Janilson, meu Deus, pastor lá do Japão. Simon, Simone, oh, what, what is that? Uh, está cortando o meu rosto. Ai, ai, ai. Genil do Oliveira, amém. Graça e paz, gente. So, um, you guys got it, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we just want to share a little bit, because everybody went to camp, right? So, uh, and, and, and they got sick there. We, we didn't know, because that's the thing, though. We just want to share a little bit, because people are treating this COVID. Each person is different. Each person is different. It's not leprosy, even though... It feels like because everybody gets so scared, right, guys? Yeah. Now let me share some of the the, the symptoms that we had, right? You you Jess, what did you have? What did you feel like you had? Um, I had like a sinus headache and uh, my it was feverish, but I didn't have a fever. Uh huh. And that's been drainage, and that was that was it. That was and it, I, yeah, right? Um, I was so to and you had sinus before, so you, you, that's why it was hard to to see it. Because it's all pretty much the same what you had before, right? And we were losing our voices from screaming at camp anyway. So and they were at camp, so yet you see, they were losing their voices. Uh, I may, oi, oi, to the <laughs> and uh, so that was it. You, mm -hmm. Did you have anything different? Not really. I just had like a headache, and I just didn't feel good. I was having like chills, but then it wasn't actually a fever, so I don't. Yeah, so it was hard. So, to tell. but you guys already completed the quarantine, right? Yep. We're, They're officially we're out. Free. Okay, yeah. so you can hug them. They're officially yes. out, right? Yeah. When was it? Monday? Monday, yeah. Officially out. I'll be out in two days. Now, with me, it was a little bit different. I, I never lost taste or the, the smell. Never. Uh, never had fever. I did have pain in my kidneys for some reason. And whatever I had the operation last year, <laughs> that is hurting quite a bit, especially today. Uh, but other than that, no fever. What else? Very little coughing. Very little. It's not like, you know. Uh, so, so those are, are, are the symptoms. Now, again, they're out. But just to be safe, you know, we're going to wait a little more. But we're good. Now, let me say this. Because some people are thinking, like, I went to the church and everything is contaminated. No, I didn't. Since they came back, we are not going to the church physically, the place, the church. So don't be afraid to show up Sunday because I'm still going to do the service from here, right? And David, David Haup, I mean, he did an awesome job plugging in, connecting. He's going to do the worship and I'm going to be preaching. The Word of God is never going to stop. I mean, I always said that from day one that we move back to Effingham. That's how we do it. We don't stop preaching the Word of God because that's how we get fed. That's how we get our strength. It's through the Word of God. Amen? So everything is clean. Everything is clear. I didn't go to church. Nothing is contaminated. Everything is ready to go. So we're going to have our service. Now, I want the girls to share something because they both went, Kendrick as well, and to to camp in kansas and uh just something that you feel like god spoke or something that it was like a highlight so anybody wants to start um, i'll go ahead and start okay um oh sorry <laughs> okay well so at camp i'm just really going after god and just wanting to have more like revelation of who he was and so I think it was either the second or the third night, I just really felt like the love of God, and I feel like it was like a lot of people did. It was just encountering His love in a new way. And so it was a really powerful experience for me, and I was able to like just realize how much God loves us and just experience that on a whole other level. And so, and also getting to see like 
other people my age and like just in my generation going after God this just as much as me and we're all, all going after the same thing and we're all experiencing this whole new depth to who God is it was just really impactful and being able to like um grow my skills in worship and practice with the worship team there and just intercede um to the heart of the Lord and yeah that was just really powerful me powerful experience for me as well as like meeting people and like making friends that are all believers and just keeping each other accountable and who speak truth into my life while I was there. So, Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's good. What about you, Jess? What What do you feel was like the highlight or? Um, I think some of the highlights were the people that we met in our group. Um, it was really cool to see how like right at the beginning, like we all connected with each yeah. other and we were all able to like tell our heart and what the Lord was doing in our life and um, what we wanted to grow in. We were able to share with that with each other. And then on worship at night, there was like the presence of God was like um, really impacting everyone in different ways. And it was really cool to see the different um, teenagers who were prophesying to each other and that we were singing together. And there was like nights where you could really feel like the joy in the place and you yeah. could really feel um, joy in the presence of God. And there was also moments that it really felt like um, the word came alive in a different way in that it wasn't just like um, saying the word, but it was like feeling it and like moving in it, mm -hmm. like abiding in Jesus and him in us, um, in what we were doing in worship and what we were doing with each other. Um, yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. How many kids were there? Like, uh, I think 165. Yeah. 165. Yeah. My goodness. Did they, did they come from everywhere or? Yeah. All over the country. All over yeah. the country. Sometimes there's, there's some people locally, some people. Yeah. yeah just everywhere. There, yeah. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that exciting to see that, you know, when we, we, we feel like and when we see everything around, it seems like everything is lost, but it's not true. Because we see young people going after God, I mean, on purpose, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm serious. These guys, I said, if you want to go, you got to raise your support, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they paid to go. They worked hard. They raised their money. They raised the support, right? Yeah. Because I, I wanted them to see, you got to make it count. You got to make it count. It's got to be intentional, yeah. right? You, it's th I mean, that's the thing in the kingdom of God. Uh, things just don't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to go with intensity. You got to go after God. I mean, you guys were there basically, I mean, what? Every day, yeah, right? Day. From the moment you, yeah. you woke up, all the way to the end of the day, right? Oh, it was the word, it was singing, it was rejoicing, it was that, you know, fellowship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So uh, I just want, you know, to take this little moment to encourage you. There is a lot of people that are going after God, and I'm glad that my kids are part of it. I am proud of you guys for, for you know, for guiding them. Because it's like you, you, you share your own experience, but they have to have. And each one of us, we all need to have uh, that moment with God where he becomes real to us, right? Yeah. I think that's the key, mm -hmm. don't you think? Yeah. I mean, now this year is going to be completely different. Bella is the, your senior, yeah. right? Jess is going to college. My baby's going to college. <laughs> How many days now? It's next week. Next week. <laughs> Pray for me, people. Pray for me. Pray for me, too. <laughs> and, you know, they're going. I mean, Jess is going to college and she's going to Eastern. Yeah, Eastern. Um, I mean, it's, it's awesome to see what God is doing in her life. They do. They all have a desire for ministry. And um, so I'm just proud of them. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for, um, you know, all the dedication and, and how much you guys love Jesus. It's, it's really cool to see it. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank you. <laughs> Say bye to everybody. I'm going to share a little word still. Amen. Just be careful with the cables here. Um, this is it. So, again, 
I mean, we're pro improvising everything here. That's why you see us moving around. Um, but I want to invite you to come Sunday. Uh, I believe this is a time to seek the Lord. Amen. It's, uh, we're pushing through. You know, I confess I had some bad days with this COVID. But since day one, we, we're gonna, we decided, we have decided. God can protect us. We can go through it. And everybody got it. But everybody's almost in the end of it. Amen. They're all out already. They are out of the quarantine. I'll be in two days. But still, we're going to wait until next week. Uh, so people would be at peace, at ease. I, uh, you know, everything is ready to go at church. So, you know, if you're healthy, please join everybody that's going to be there. And I'm going to be sharing the word from here. Well, I mean, technology is amazing. Uh, I want us to go back to something that I share on Sunday. Um, which, you know, this is how you usually do it. On Wednesdays, we kind of recap some of the things with a different twist or something that God is revealing to us. So, uh, if you got your Bible, let's go to Acts chapter 27. Acts 27. There is so much there. There is so much there. Um, but I want us to see something because... Uh, this past Sunday, I mean, the camera's the other way, so yeah, it's going to be, right? So this way would be the right way, but I don't think we can all see it. So I'll be reading to you five of the things that they, they work as anchors in our soul that is very important because we see that they use the anchors. It didn't stop the ship. They used the anchors and still the ship was destroyed. But I was sharing Sunday the importance of having these five things as we go through. How do we find the strength in the storms of life? Five things that are very important. Number one, believing, believing in the Word of God. Believing in the Word of God. Essential. You know, this is what, uh, this is what will, will hold us. This is what will give us the strength. It's that, that word that God has spoken to us. And so believing in the word is the key. Maintain a calm focus. No, not desperation. Not desperation. And I know some days are harder than others, especially if you are in pain. When you're in pain, it feels like everything is going crazy. I feel like that. There's some days it's harder, and that's those are the days that you gotta put worship music, and you gotta if you can't read it, put the word somewhere, hear someone preaching, or uh, find a way for the word to continue to go into your spirit. Because when we are in pain, it's harder to focus, it's it's harder to concentrate, and so when chaos is all around us, it is challenging, but it's possible. I say from experience, it is possible. Amen. So believing in his word, a calm focus. Now, this is the other thing, though. When, when we go through something, it's, it's very, it's, it's hard to think about others. But, you know, as we shared Sunday, the regard for others is important. We cannot just think like, well, I'm going through this right now and forget about everybody else. No, we, we have to keep loving one another and I mean, I want to give a big thank you to everybody that's coming by. And, and I mean, even some members in the church, Pastor Aaron and Trina, they come and they drop food by the door here. Uh, Doug and Sheila, man, you guys are amazing. Amazing. Thank you. I mean, you know, big heart to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, you know, they come and they bring, they put by the door and they leave. And then we go and pick it up. And, and so many other people that are, you know, serving us in different ways that, I mean, we just want to express our thankful uh, or, 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 you know, how thankful we are for your life, for participating, for serving us at this moment. I mean, it's, it's truly a blessing to us. Amen. Um, so again, believing in his word, maintain a calm focus, regard for others, understanding purpose. I mean, they, they were desperate. What we see in, in, in Acts 27, you know, Paul said, we should not do this trip from experience. Now, in the beginning, it was not the Holy Spirit. It was from experience. He had been to shipwrecks before. So he was trying to tell them, and we could go there actually. 
It says that now when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Man, I perceive, and that word perceive is from past experience. Man, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster. And much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than the thing spoken by Paul. Now, so that's the thing. It was from experience. But then later on, we see that he spoke through the Holy Spirit. And that's what we need. You know, we need to keep our focus in the Word of God, what he said. Remember Peter he, when he saw Jesus walking on water, he said, if it is you, bid me to come. I mean, it, I love that because it's like, if Jesus can do it, I can do it. You know, he broke bread, he blessed, he gave thanks and he, he broke it and he gave to the people and the disciples did the same, the same thing. So he was on that flow, of that, that mindset that if Jesus did, I can do it. And we should think like that. You know, it's, it, it's like, okay, just give me the word. You give me the word, I can do it. If you give me the word, I can walk on water. If you speak the word, I can do it. So this is the time. And again, we, that's what we're trying to really, really, I, I'm praying and believing for us and for you as well, that as we go through this season, we, we have, I don't know how people do it. I really don't. I don't know how can you go through something of this magnitude that we're seeing 2020, Without the presence of God, without Jesus, without His Word, you know, we've seen so much. You know, I'm not putting down any that we've seen. We're not putting down, I mean, many, many people, I mean, people's lives were lost. So, you know, I'm thankful for God's protection, thankful for God's wisdom, and thank you for the Word of God. I'm thankful that, you know, we're standing in His Word and believing in His promise. That's what we're doing. You know, so when we go here, it says, Now, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, no small tempest beat on us. The storms have a way to do that. You know, they come against us. They beat on us. All hope that would be saved was finally given up. So he thought he was, that, that, that's it. We're, we're done. Uh, but after long abstinence from food, Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Man, you should have listened to me. You know. But again, he was a prisoner and captive, and now all of a sudden, out of 276 men, he becomes the captain. I mean, he became a leader in that situation, and that's what we need. In moments of chaos, we need to follow God's instruction. That's the key. So Paul stood in the midst of them, and you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart... For there will be no loss of life. Remember when he perceived, he said there was going to be loss of life, but it was just his impression. But now God spoke to him, and then he says, There will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before. Now, all those five things that I share is here. You know, so there will be no loss of life, regard for others. The word of God was spoken to him. Then understanding purpose. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, man. For I believe, remember, believing in the word of God. For I believe, God, that I, it will be just as it was told me. So if the Lord said it. I believe it. Those five things, they're the key here. He received the word from God. He maintained his calm. He was focused on the word that God said. Because until then, he thought, this is it. We give up on life. This is the end. You know, but when believing his word, he maintained his focus. He, the regard for others. God said, I gave all of them. So it's like everybody here, they're going to be saved. Everybody here, they're going to see that I am in your life. Everybody here is going to experience deliverance, Paul, because of you. Because of uh, the word that I've given you. Because of the purpose that I have for your life. All of them are going to be affected. Isn't that amazing? And that's why we need to surround ourselves with people with purpose. People that are full of the word of God. People that know where they are going. 
Amen. Very important, the purpose, understanding purpose, because then we can move in faith, not in fear, false evidence appearing real, but we can move in faith. And that's what he did. Now, I want us to see something that's very important because you see this throughout the scripture. Uh, when you go back to John, where Jesus talks about he is, I am the bread of life. Amen. Very important that we understand that uh, because look at this. Um, when Paul talks about, verse 32, And as the day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, uh, Today is the fourteenth day you have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for uh, your survival. Since now, watch this. This is amazing to me. Because he's talking about not only the hair in his head, he's talking about the hair on everybody's head. Uh, thousands upon thousands of hair. Look at this. Uh, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. Isn't that, I mean, this is amazing. Uh, and when he had said these things, he took bread, he gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken, it, he began to eat. He set the example. Then they were all encouraged and also took food themselves. And in all, we were 276 persons on the ship. Now, this is amazing. What does bread, let me give you this, what does bread mean spiritually? Bread is a gift from God. Bread is a gift from God. Remember, Moses fed his people in the desert with food which fell from heaven. Now, during the Last Supper, when bread, uh, remember when Jesus is talking about that bread became the body of Christ. It was broken for them. When Jesus multiplied, remember that Jesus multiplied bread and fish? To feed the crowd, to feed the multitudes, 5,000 men plus women and children. Bread became a sign of sharing. And it also symbolized the word of God which nourished the crowds. Now, what does it mean to eat the bread of life? Amen. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, simply put, he means that we are not satisfied spiritually unless we know Jesus. We're not satisfied spiritually unless we know Jesus. We're not spiritually satisfied unless we have Jesus in our lives. Or, you know, or to be more blunt, it's like we cannot survive spiritually without Jesus. So when we go to John 6, 47 and 48, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. He who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Now, I read this uh, from Spurgeon just, just today. And I thought, you know, I mean, I read Spurgeon for a long time, but some days it's just like it really clicks, you know. So uh, again, when you read that scripture, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. So life comes first. I know it's obvious, but that's what it is. <laughs> life comes first and food follows afterwards. So life comes first, food comes afterwards. It is impossible for a dead man to feed or to be fed. Only the living can eat and drink. Now, what I saw today is this three things. Alive, spiritually fed, and then you're ready for action. These three things. I just want to leave you today with these three things, and I hope you get it. Alive, spiritually fed, action. Ready for action. So when we go back there, it talks about, watch this. Uh, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. That's the first part. The second part, I am the bread of life. Now, let me read it to you because this is Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon. Watch. So it is with the soul and the soul. Uh, it, so it is with the soul and the soul must be fed on spiritual food. Souls cannot eat what bodies can eat. Still, they must eat. All the qualities in a spiritual man which are gracious need food. 
Faith needs truth to believe. Love needs a revelation of love to keep it burning. Hope needs to be reminded of the things to be expected in the future, so that it may continue to hope. And every grace within a spiritual man is clamorous for spiritual food that he may be may fed on. Now, watch this. If, if there are any of you who profess to be spiritual men, and yet you say that you can live without reading the Bible, without attending the house of prayer, without any outward means of grace, all I can say is that I do not want to try your system of living. This is Spurgeon. Uh, for I should be starved by it uh, if you are not. And I would not recommend any Christian man to try to see how long his spirit can live without any spiritual food. It's impossible. No. First life, then food. And this implies that where there is life, there must be food. Those two things are very simple, yet many people live as if they did not know them. So we have life in Christ, but then we need to feed ourselves on the Word of God. And again, when, when Jesus remembered that they had supper, he rose from supper, and then he began to serve. And then Judas came. The same thing here. We see that they were in the, boat, the ship. They didn't eat. Paul preached the word. He shared the revelation that God gave him. Then they partook of the bread. They were strengthened. Then action came. So those three things to me is like, we are alive in Christ Jesus. We need to feed spiritually on the Word of God, but then we must be ready for action. Action comes after we are alive in Christ, we're feeding ourselves with the Word of God, and then we're ready to go. So those are the three things that I want us to, to, to pay attention to today, because the same thing. The disciples didn't get it, that Jesus was teaching them. Jesus was ministering to them. Jesus was breaking the spiritual bread to them. He was healing the sick. So when they came and they wanted to eat bread, it was like, okay, we already did that. Now, let me show you to see if you get it. So bring the bread to me. Five loaves, two fish. He, he gave thanks. He broke. He shared. And then what happens next? Everybody was fed. Everybody was satisfied. But then he tells them to go to the other side. And that's why when he comes walking on water, he rebukes their lack of faith. Why? They didn't get it. You were feeding on the word of God. You are with me. You have life because of me. But you have more than that. You're spiritually fed. And that's how you can go through the storms of life. Amen. So those three things. And then we're going to pray. Alive because of Christ. In Christ. You're spiritually fed. And, and this is like daily, you know, daily, not once a week, not one hour a week, not 30 minutes a week. You know, if you go that physically, you know, you're going to get weak. I'm talking about we, we're every day. This is how we're doing. This is how we're approaching this thing. This is how we're doing this, you know, going through the season. This is how we're going through the storm and we're getting on the other side. Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. We're going to get to the other side. We're not, we're, no, we're coming out of this in Jesus name. But then again, the word should propel us. The word that we receive, you know, we should understand it's empowering us to do the works of ministry, not in fear, but in faith. Amen. So I hope you're blessed today. But again, I want to invite you, if you're here in Effingham area, go to the church. I'll be preaching from here. We are on the screens there, and it's going to be a beautiful service. And I'm sure God is going to meet us once again and bless us through His Word. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for everyone that is helping us and serving us and uh, bringing food. And Lord, only you can, can bless them back. But we pray a hundredfold return. 100 fold return to everyone that somehow is helping us in some way and in, in, in at this season father in the name of jesus we're standing upon your word we're standing upon the healing word healing promises we're declaring we're not afraid we're not intimidated we're going through this in victory father god i pray for every burden to be removed every yoke to be destroyed i pray for everyone that's connected now everyone that will connect it later father god i pray for the peace of god in the midst of the storm.
I pray that we would understand, Lord God, that we are alive. We're made alive in Christ, but we need to keep on feeding on the Word of God. That's how the church in the book of Acts did. And I ask you, Lord God, that we would do the same. That we would believe your Word, that we would share your Word, that we would sing your Word, that we would declare your Word, that we would pray your Word, that we would walk upon the Word of God in the name of Jesus. Father, I bless everyone. I pray, Father God, that you know this COVID will not prosper because we have a promise. We have purpose. And we, we, we're going to move in faith, not in fear, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great night and uh, a great rest of the week. Again, you know, this too shall pass. We, we're going to get to the other side. Have an awesome night. Blessings. Bye now.